Hey, what's going on? Can you guys see me? Check it out. I got the mini tripod set up. We're in my office here in uh, New York City. And uh, in any case, I want to do a little research um, because on Monday we have a holiday coming up, which we call Martin Luther King Day. And as you know, Martin Luther King was very influenced by um, Mohandas Gandhi, and um, I've been in a real Gandhi phase lately, which led me to start studying Dr. Martin Luther King, um, especially because the holiday's coming up. So, I just wanted to learn a little bit more about it, and um, unfortunately I have some very bad news, but maybe it's just bad news to me. Um, in any case, the first thing that I did is I just wanted to like figure out um, like about the whole assassination thing okay so because I didn't know who killed him or how it happened I mean I know if you're in the activist movement everybody's always like um, the government killed Martin Luther King you know just like they killed the Kennedys and, Mar and Malcolm X right but you know it's easy to say that it's one thing to say that but I wanted to go and just research it so I could get a handle on what was going on I was quickly reminded um, that according to our government, um, James Earl Ray, right, a lone gunman, <laughs> killed uh, Martin Luther King. Um, but then I was totally shocked, um, very quickly and immediately shocked, and you could do this yourself, just type it in in Google, who killed Martin Luther King, and you will immediately be brought to... Uh, all the uh, evidence that's been presented out there that shows that everybody knows that James Earl Ray didn't kill Martin Luther King. In fact, even um, the King family has been suing the American government for the last 20 years uh, to try to get James Earl Ray free. Um, they want the government to reopen the case because they don't believe James Earl Ray killed Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I didn't know this. I mean, I knew that the 60s sucked because that's when like Dwight D. Eisenhower warned us that we were being taken over by a military industrial complex. And then when they killed John F. Kennedy, that's pretty much when they took over the American government. But I didn't realize, really realize that it like really infiltrated completely to the point where, um, you know, as the story goes, Co-Intel Pro, which is like a covert intelligence program within the FBI, um, did everything in their power to stop the civil rights movement um, during the 60s and the feminist movement. And um, they had total carte blanche um, to do it. They, they were allowed to do whatever they wanted in order to stop the civil rights movement. Um, and you can go online here. There's a lot of websites where you can go online to study it. Um, just type it in Google. I mean, the website I'm on right now is called whatreallyhappened.com. You can go there um, and you can check it out. It, you're going to spend four to eight hours worth of reading. I would suggest that you, um, you know, check out a lot of different websites. But let's cut to the chase. So even the Martin Luther King's family doesn't believe James Earl Ray did it. The people that are on the balcony where uh, Martin Luther King is lying, they're pointing to who did it. They're pointing in the opposite direction of where James, James Earl Ray was. <sighs> it's just so fucking sad. And then um, in the last six or seven years, finally a man came out and admitted that his dad was one of the men um, who uh, did it. You can read the article um, in Reuters, CNN, and the Associated Press um, about this man who finally admitted that his father was one of the co-conspirators in, in, in killing Martin Luther King. There was some FBI operatives involved as well. And this is all reported from CNN, Reuters, Associated Press. And then the FBI agent who was uh, responsible for the investigation, Donald Wilson, he finally came out and admitted that he was scared for his family's safety, so he didn't want to tell anybody. But he also had evidence that James Earl Ray didn't do it. It just fucking sucks. And you know what it is? My friends always ask me, Ed, why do you think about this stuff? Like, just try to ignore it. Um, because you can't do anything about it anyway, you know? I mean, let's say that, you know, I mean, look, dude, you're right, okay? The government fucking lies to us all the time. 
And let's say you're right. Every single thing they taught us in school was a fucking lie. Right? James R. Ray, Lee Harvey Oswald, blah, blah, blah. So you can't do anything about it, and you're threatening the safety of yourself and your family. All right. And I know that. And plus it makes you sad and scared. Scared. Because, I mean, we're dealing basically with a dictatorship government who's constantly lying to the people, and so you're left kind of sad and scared. And yet, I have to tell you that I still believe in our democracy, and I still believe in our country, and I still believe in the power of the people. So, that's why I do it. Um, yes, I'm sad by learning this today. Maybe you even knew this, you know? Maybe to you it's old news. To me, it wasn't. I just had no clue. I, I spent four hours today studying it, and I just can't even believe what I fucking found. In any case, let's talk about Dr. Martin Luther King real quick. Um, you know that it took 15 years to create the Martin Luther King holiday. John Conyers from Michigan first introduced it um, four days after Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968, and it was not approved until 1983. It just goes to show how truly racist our country was. Um, for it to take that long. Um, Ronald Reagan signed it into um, an official law in 1983, and this is where it really gets good. Um, there's this uh, Arizona governor. You guys know the story, right? I just want to say this. Um, Arizona government governor Evan Meacham, or Meckham, rescinds MLK Day as his first act in office. That was his first act in office as governor, to rescind Martin Luther King Day, wherever you are. From all of us to you, enjoy it. Um, in any case, the cool thing is, is that uh, the NFL in 1991 moves the 1993 Super Bowl site from Phoenix, Arizona to Pasadena, California as a protest against the MLK uh, uh, rescission and uh, uh, in Arizona. Now that's cool. NFL baby, because we all love football here. So, real quick, um, in any case, Martin Luther King now is an official holiday, and um, I think we need a Malcolm X and a Black Panthers holiday also. Um, quite frankly. And a Native American day, for God's sakes. I mean, let's get real. Let's get real. Fuck. What are we waiting for? Um, listen, real quick. It's important to honor Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and the Black Panthers, and all the millions of white, brown, black, yellow, and red Americans that helped uh, the civil rights movement. But it's also important to ask, what are we doing now, and what challenges do we face now when it comes to the human rights movement? I would say that's what we need to start to think about now. In America now, how can we be more like Martin Luther King? How can we help people who need help now? in America. We need to honor Martin Luther King and all the others that helped the civil rights movement, but we also need to ask ourselves, where are there problems now with our other, with our fellow brothers and sisters in America and all over the world? And we need to continue on in his spirit and in his name to continue the struggle that he, that he endured and that he fought for. And the same with, you know, all the other leaders throughout civilization who have shown us a better example, you know? That's what we need to do. I hate to say it, but I think that our um, fellow Americans who are same-sex or who are homosexuals need our help right now. And that's all I'll say. Um, but they need our help. More people need to come to their aid. And let's get them equal rights. All right? And then we'll move on to the Native Americans and we'll rectify that situation. But in the meantime, thanks for tuning in.